Okay, this is gonna turn on. Look at that. Wow, that's so good. Hey everyone, welcome back to my new temporary apartment kitchen. This week's genius recipe is for an almost no cook pasta sauce that is creamy without any cream at all. I'm, I'm choked up about the cream. <laughs> It really is amazing how much creaminess and flavor you can get from this combination of ingredients. And if you like the sound of that and you want more Genius Recipes, you can like and subscribe and that will also help support everything else that Food52 is putting out on YouTube. So this recipe comes from Heidi Swanson, who is the cookbook author and photographer behind 101 Cookbooks, one of the original food blogs, as well as the Supernatural series of cookbooks. And she's working on a new one now. This recipe would be a perfect fit for that cookbook because it is so incredibly simple. Heidi actually said on 101 Cookbooks when she posted this recipe back in April that it is one of the sort of biggest impact and lowest effort recipes. Those are my words, not hers. <laughs> but she said it was the least amount of effort for the most delicious thing. And so of course I had to make it. The no cook part of this recipe, or the, I should say the almost no cook part of this recipe is that you do need to toast a bunch of nuts, but you can do that in the oven very quickly. You could do it on the stove top if you don't wanna heat the oven, or in a lot of cases you can buy already toasted nuts. I have already toasted mine. So normally the first thing you would do after toasting your nuts is combining it with some garlic and throwing it into a mortar and pestle or a trusty Cuisinart like this one that I borrowed from my in-laws. However, you also will need some grated cheese and I do not have a grater in this uh, temporary kitchen that we're in. So what I did instead is, you can also kind of grate this in the Cuisinart. It's not really grating if you don't have the grating attachment, but if you throw it in your Cuisinart, it will turn to kind of a fun like rubble which I learned from my boss, Meryl. Okay, this is gonna turn on. Okay, getting there, but there's still some big chunks. Meryl has a recipe on Food 52 for a farro salad with, I think, roasted mushrooms. And part of what is so delicious about that farro salad is that you get these little crumbles of Parmesan instead of finely grated. So I think that will be just fine if I make them fine enough in the Cuisinart for this recipe. You know, it's kind of turning them into the shape that you would buy like in the can, the shakeable can or like in the cheese section of a grocery store. Which is also a lovely texture if that's what you're going for. All right, I needed about a half cup and that looks pretty close to me. Close enough. <laughs> Thanks. Now I'm gonna make the rest of the pasta sauce. Heidi calls for three to four cloves of garlic. These ones are kind of fat, so I'm just going with two. Also, I'm kind of a wimp because these barely get cooked with the warm pasta water. So they will still be pretty sharp and pungent. So here, you wanna grind them relatively fine, but not so far that they become walnut butter. And you still want a little bit of chunkiness, kind of like a bolognese or other kind of meat sauce. Oh, what's going on? Oh, well, oh. <laughs> well, I've made this harder on myself. Okay, hopefully that'll work. All right, I don't wanna take it any further than that. In fact, I might've gone a little bit too far, sorry, Heidi, but I think it'll still be good. You could use a mortar and pestle. You could use like a mini chopper or a Cuisinart. Um, you could even just finely chop it by hand if you don't have either of those things. I'm gonna have everything ready to go before I drop my pasta because the very last ingredient in the pasta sauce is the starchy pasta water. That is what's going to combine with the walnuts, make it really creamy and thick and I wanna be able to just go. So I'm gonna juice my lemons, have my cheese ready to go, 
Tiny calls for a lot of black pepper, which I cannot find in this apartment kitchen. I'm not sure why. <laughs> there's, there's not a lot of places for it to hide. So I'm gonna just need a couple tablespoons of lemon juice. Ooh. Not including the seeds. That is everything that I need for my pasta sauce. I just need to get my water heated. I'll go do that right now. <laughs> so by putting this pasta in, I'm making both my pasta and my sauce in a way. Those just need to cook for the full time to al dente because they're not going to cook anymore in the sauce. And we will have everything we need, the starchy pasta water and the noodles themselves. Pasta's cooked. I've got my starchy pasta water. And now you're gonna get to see the magic of creamy pasta sauce with walnuts instead of cream. Look, it's already starting to get a little bit kind of milkier looking. Look at that. And that's just from, I think, the oils in the walnuts releasing and emulsifying with the starchy pasta water. You also wanna add half of the cheese here and the lemon juice and the pepper if you have it. Yeah. Excited? Got pasta sauce. I'm gonna try tasting it on a noodle. Mmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, that's so good. I don't think I wanna add any more water. I think it's perfect. So, if you had a bigger bowl than me, you would add your pasta right to the bowl. I do not. So, I'm gonna just dump it all back into the pot. And I'm using rigatoni here. Heidi says that you should use a short pasta shape that will have holes and cups and grooves to catch this sauce. So she used something called Reginetti. Um, but said like shells would be good, orchiette would be good, anything that's gonna catch that sauce really nicely. This one woke up from her nap and wants to get in on the noodles. Another thing that I really loved about this recipe when I saw it on Heidi's blog was that not only is it this great recipe that is fast and will get me out of the pasta ruts that I am in, but <laughs> she also has all these different ideas for ways that you can riff on it. So using other nuts, throwing other vegetables in at the last minute so that you don't have to think of a side, um, what to do with the leftovers. So I've made her idea for a pasta and bean stew the next day. So taking the leftover dressed pasta uh, and adding uh, beans and stock. You want a noodle? Are you in it for the noodles? Here, I'm gonna let one cool. Let's blow on it. Thank you. <laughs> good job, good blowing. Got it? Got it? Is it good? Can I have some too? Mmm. Mmm. No. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Here it is on a plate. Uh, Heidi suggests garnishes like more cheese, um, crispy breadcrumbs, thyme or other herbs, other things you want to sprinkle on top. Again, because we don't have a grater, 
This is what I've been doing with parm lately, just using a fork, uh, which I didn't want to do for the full half cup in the recipe, but this has been really fun and handy when I don't want to bust out the Cuisinart. You can put lemon zest on it too. You can do all kinds of things to doctor it. The thing I love about this recipe is that, yes, it's got the comforts of having sort of a cream sauce, but it's not something that you would just want to eat in the depths of cold winter when you're craving creamy comfort food. It's very fresh and bright tasting because of the lemon and the garlic and the nuts. So you could really eat this anytime you're around and be very happy. <laughs> Unless what you had in mind was just a straight plain noodle. <laughs> But we don't have that problem, do we? <laughs> I loved Heidi's idea for putting leftovers to good use. The the like nutty garlicky pasta then the next day can become a bean stew by just adding some cooked beans and some good stock, maybe some chopped kale or other vegetables. Um, I would really love to know all the ways that you would riff on this idea, both in cooking this recipe or in the things that you would do with the leftovers. I know that you will have great ideas because you always do. We have a, a bit of news. We're going to be switching from weekly to every other week with Genius Videos after this one. And that's so that um, I can focus on some exciting new projects. So stay tuned. In a few weeks, we will have some exciting news for you. And in the meantime, on those in-between weeks, you'll be getting to hear from the other geniuses at Food52. And I'm really excited to see what they do. Um, thanks so much. I will see you in two weeks.